With the release of Tumso Masket came the most powerful magic weapon in old school RuneScape, the Tumican Shadow. The Tumican Shadow triples your magic accuracy and magic damage which is why it is so powerful. The weapon being as good as it is makes obtaining one quite expensive. Starting with no gold in my bank, my goal is to earn enough GP to purchase the Tumican Shadow and take on one of RuneScape's newest and more difficult challenge, a 500 invocation completion. Here is 0 GP to Tumican Shadow. Hello everyone and welcome. This is my old group Iron Man account, Grayest Cat 2, which people who follow my content should be all too familiar with. And today, I'll be starting from 0 GP to eventually earn enough money to afford a Timikin Shadow, which is currently around 1.8 billion GP. Before we get started, I do want to showcase my bank, as I won't be starting from nothing, as I do have a few skilling outfits and diary items available to me, along with some random assorted items that I've earned throughout the group Iron Man series. I do also have a few broken combat items which I won't allow myself to use until I repair them. It's not a perfect solution, but that is what I'm going with. And also, don't worry about the totem pieces and the dark totems. I won't be using those throughout the series, as I do realize that would be way too OP of a start. Now, one other tool that I will allow myself to use throughout this series is my house. It is not a maxed house, though it is very close to it. And I understand that houses are very powerful, but I did put in the time throughout the group Iron Man series to get the house where it is now, so I would like to use it throughout the series to make a lot of money making methods possible. Before I left the group Iron Man series, one thing I really wanted to do was max this account, and I've never had a max account, and this account is very close to it. Maybe not extremely, extremely close, still quite a few levels to go, but I would like to put in the time and maybe do skills that will also be profitable and also work towards max, which is what I'm going to be starting with with this episode, and that is going to be thieving. A quite fast skill and one of the best money making skills in the game, so let's get started on thieving. Starting off, I think I am going to Thieve the Knights of Ardon. It is a great way to get some cash if you have absolutely nothing. I think I'm going to stay here until I have enough cash to probably get my construction cape. And then I think I want a little bit of extra GP as well to probably get a blackjack, so you'll probably know where I'm going after that. I've been thieving the Knight of Ardon for a little bit over an hour now, and as you can see, I got a decent bit over the amount I was looking for, but I was very close to a level, so I figured I'd go ahead and get 81 thieving. And now that I have a bit over 100k, I am going to go ahead and run myself over to the estate agent, which is very luckily right next to where I was thieving, and we'll go ahead and buy us one of the most overpowered capes in the game, the construction cape. And there we are, one of the most OP capes in the game. And we have a little bit of extra GP, so let's go ahead and head to the Grand Exchange and buy a few things. Now I did say buy a few things, but the only thing I really needed was the Maple Blackjack. As I mentioned, I am going to go blackjacking now. I know these aren't the most exciting money making methods, but right now I'm just trying to get some starter cash so I can do some of the more expensive money makers. And I'm also trying to get my thieving level up so I can also do uh, some thieving money makers that make quite a bit more money. So let's start the blackjack experience. Now I'm not going to make you guys sit through one of the most boring and click intensive skilling methods in the game, so what I'm going to do is just compile all the levels that I get from this. I'm probably going to go all the way to level 91 so I can start my next thieving skilling method. So yeah, I'll see you guys then. This is going to take me many hours for you, it'll be like 5 seconds. And finally, after many hours of mana fight thugs, we finally get ourselves 91 thieving, which will unlock our next money maker. Before I move on to my next money maker, I do want to give you guys some information about the Oridorian Knights and the mana fight thugs. From 80 to 81 thieving, I was getting about 150k XP an hour and 180k GP an hour at the Ardoin Knights. And 81 to 91 thieving, which I was doing at the Menophyte Thugs, I was getting around 250k XP an hour at max efficiency and around 210k GP an hour. Now that we have a bit over 3 mil to work with, I am going to invest in a few items, and you could probably guess my next money maker is another thieving money maker. Now that we have 91 thieving, I unlock the top floor of the pyramid plunder, so I'm going to do that and try to get myself a Pharaoh Scepter. I went ahead and invested a little bit of my cash into the region bracelet, about a thousand wines for food, and a hundred antidotes just to help because you do get poison that pyramid plunder. There is one other thing I want to buy, but it is not at the Grand Exchange, so let's head over to the Duel Arena actually. Well, I suppose this is now the PvP arena. I haven't actually been here since the update, but the more important thing, I do want to pick myself up an HP cape because with the region bracelet and an HP cape, I should be restoring four HP per minute, which is quite good compared to the normal one HP per minute. Now that I've made it to Sophonum, I do want to pay a little challenge on myself, that being is I will continue to do Pyramid Plunder until I get 99 Thieving, or until I get the Pharaoh Scepter, whichever comes first. The Pharaoh Scepter is worth about 7 mil, so I do want to do this until I get one, and I should get one before I get 99 Thieving, as the rate is something about 1 in 8 to 10 hours if I do the correct sarcophagus and gold chests. There is 92 Thieving. 
And here is 93 thieving. Yet another thieving level here at the Pyramid Plunder up to 94 thieving. And another thieving level without getting the scepter up to 95 thieving now. Did not think I would make it this far without getting the scepter, but it seems like it's the case. Maybe we'll make it all the way to 99. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Yet another thieving level up to 96 thieving now. Still no scepter. When I said I was going to make it all the way to 99, did not think I'd make it this far, but three levels to go or maybe scepter. Yes! I have finally found it! Oh man, 96 and a half thieving, all the way from 91 thieving to get this Pharaoh Scepter. Man, that took some time, but we finally have it, and we can finally move on to our next activity, but let's go ahead and sell this thing. Just like I've done with the previous two methods, I do want to give you the XP per hour I was getting from 91 to 96 thieving. I was getting around 200k XP an hour. This could be up to 270k if I was focusing more on XP rather than going for the scepter. But since I was going for the scepter, I was getting around 200k. As for GP per hour, let me go ahead and pull up the Grand Exchange as I actually have everything sold already, including the Region Bracelet as I will not need it for the next method I will be doing. So there is the Pharaoh Scepter, and then I was also collecting the Gold Seals, the Gold Scarabs, and the Gold Statuettes for a total of like 8.1 mil made within that time, and then I also sold off my Region Bracelet. So in total, we are now over the 10 mil mark, the nice green cash stack, and I still have 700k from earlier buying all the things we have, so we are now up to 11 mil cash. A lot of cash starting with the first episode and we're not even done yet as we're going into our next method with a very similar theme of thieving. So the next money making method I'll be doing in this video is actually just one of the best money makers in the game and I went ahead and bought a few things. What I'll need is the dodgy necklace, a lava battle staff, and a bunch of cosmic runes. I went over and swapped over to the Archaea spellbook and if we throw on the lava battle staff I can cast shadow veil. What shadow veil does is basically reduce my chance of getting caught when pickpocketing along with the dodgy necklaces. I think I have like a 36% chance of not getting stunned whenever I fail a pickpocket, and as you can just notice, I will be pickpocketing a certain NPC. If you guys have not guessed, the money making method I'll be doing next is pickpocketing elves. Elves are very interesting. At 99 thieving, you on average get one enhanced seed every two hours, and with the rogue outfit, you'll get a second one, so you get two every two hours, so on average, you'll get one per hour. However, I am not 99 thieving, I am 96 though, with all of that training there at the Pyramid Plunder, so it should take me a little bit longer than two hours to get one drop, but who knows, I can get lucky and get it a lot quicker than that. I really have no idea how long this is going to take, but it should take nowhere near as long as it took me to get the scepter, which if you're curious was about 22 hours. One cool trick I do also want to show you guys before I get started, if you shift click the elf, you can set its left click option to pickpocket as you see I'm doing here, and I can just left click pickpocket instead of having to right click pickpocket, which is so much more convenient. Yes, we got it. Pretty much exactly on drop rate as well. The enhanced crystal teleport seed, not too bad. Go ahead and open the sidebar, look at that. 1011 pickpockets, so pretty much exactly on drop rate. Like I said, it's 1021 or drop rate. So I actually got a pretty decent bit lucky here. And just to show up on the price check, as you can see, they are worth about 3 mil a piece. So I made about 6 mil in a very short period of time. Let's go ahead and head to the Grand Exchange and sell those things off. That money making method did not take too long at all. It only took me about 2 hours in order to make a little bit over 3 mil. I, I did use about 31 dodgy necklaces and it looks like I used 600 and... 35 cosmic runes so a little bit of supply cost there but if we just go ahead and throw everything into the price checker and take out the dodgy necklaces and the cosmic runes as you can see a nice 6.3 6.4 mil plus the crystal shards as well which i can turn into money with divine potions if i wish to do so but let's go ahead and sell everything that we got first everything else sold and if we go ahead and collect the inventory as you can see a nice 6.2 mils would end up being after the ge uh, tax and everything like that i did insta sell everything so i may have lost a little bit of cash there but it's completely fine because if i just check everything in to my bank now from nothing we are already up to 17 mil that is quite amazing super happy with the progress so far but that is not the end of this episode even though that is a lot of money to be made within the first episode i still have one more big uh thieving money maker that i want to try out you may know what it is but let's go ahead and get equipped to do that the first thing i am going to grab is the dragon's medallion which i do not have in my bank and that kind of does give away the money maker i am going to be pickpocketing virus in hopes for a blood shard it is a one in 5k unlike the one in 1k i just went for but at this 
it's the same where if I get one blood shard, I will get two with the full rogues outfit. And that's what I'll be going for. Blood shards about 7.5 mil a piece right now. So if I do manage to get one, especially early on, I will make an insane amount of money in an insane short amount of time. But on average, it'll take me about eight hours to uh, get a blood shard. So it should take about eight hours. So that's what I'm expecting. Hopefully I at least go on drop rate or a little uh, lower, but if I go over drop rate, it's not too bad, I guess. Just like the elves I was pickpocketing, you can cast Shadow Veil, you can use a dodgy necklace, and you can also left click pickpocket by shift clicking to uh, left click option. So it should be pretty nice. I will also be doing the same thing I did with the Pharaoh Scepter, either get 99 Thieving or the Blood Shard, whichever comes first. Just hit 97 Thieving, so let's see what we get first, our Blood Shard or 99 Thieving. And there was 98 thieving. You know what that means. We now only have one level until we are done or until we get the blood shard. If we hit 99 thieving without the blood shard, that is where I will stop. But if we get the blood shard, then that is also where I'll stop. I really do hope I get the blood shard. Don't get me wrong. I would love 99 thieving, but the blood shard is what I'm looking for. So one level to go. Let's see. We have reached a decent milestone. No, we are not about to get 99 thieving. But if I go ahead and show you guys the loot tracker, we have 4,999 virus. And the drop rate for the blood shard is 5,000. So if I can get my lost pickpocket in here, we now have 5,000 virus pickpocketed. But unfortunately, we do not have a blood shard. But I guess if you want to look on the bright side and say a one fortunate thing is we have about 3,000 more pickpockets to go. So in total, we'll be just above 8,000 pickpockets total to go for the blood shard. And things tend to work out on drop rate, pretty much every drop in RuneScape. Uh, I, I don't go super dry on, and hopefully this will also be that case where I just get the blood shard a little bit after the drop rate. You guys will see if I do. Otherwise, we're just going to get 99 thieving. So let's see how luck plays out. It happened. We finally got it. Oh, we did not have to make it to 99 thieving. Oh, I am so happy. I was like leaning back on my chair. Didn't even see that I got it, but I saw I had like an underlining chat and I knew there was one or two things that could happen is I got the pet or the blood shard. And here it is, the blood shard. Go ahead and pull up the Vire Tracker. Not too bad, a little bit over the drop rate, but 890 out of uh, over 5,000 over. I am not going to uh, complain about that. That is not too bad at all. So most important thing now, let's go to the Grand Exchange and sell off these bad boys. That is a lot of money. Apparently it's plus 18 mil, but let's figure out exactly how much it is. One last thing before I go ahead and sell off everything. So I want to mention the XP per hour I was getting at Vyres. 180k XP an hour from 96 to 98 thieving. Not too bad. It really was not bad at all. It's even better than what the wiki is saying because the wiki assumes for some reason you're not using dodgy neck necklaces and if you are using dodgy necklaces it is insane Vyres definitely a plus one for me even better than the elves now let's go ahead and sell off our bank all right i've checked everything into the grand exchange and as you can see i also sold off all the rubies the diamonds the death runes and the blood runes that i got from the virus here's the loot tracker if you're curious just so you know that all the loot is accurate i got what i sold so there's no confusion there Let's start with the blood shards. I haven't actually looked. I just insta sold them what they're going for. And apparently they're even selling higher than what it's priced at. I have no idea what that sold for. Uh, it looks like 16.7. So I'm really not great with math. We'll just take 16.7 uh, from two blood shards. Literally a single pickpocket was worth 16.7 mil. Quite crazy. And if we collect the rest of it, that's also uh, a little bit over 1 mil, it seems, as it went from 18 to 20. But all of this money in my inventory was just from those virus. It's actually kind of nuts. Don't get me wrong. I spent a lot of time at virus. Not as much as I spent on the scepter. But that being said, uh, that's quite crazy. And yeah, as I just mentioned, that is not all of our money. Because if we go into the bank here, we also have 16 mil from the scepter and the elven crystals from earlier. And I, I think what I want to do is just literally sell off everything, everything I bought, like the cosmic ruins, the dodgy necklaces, everything in my bank, and see how much total we've made for this episode. So I didn't have as much in my bank as I thought I did, but we did get a few hundred K. So if we go ahead and collect that and examine our cash stack, we now have made basically 37 mil from absolutely nothing in this episode. That is definitely one way to start an episode, but 37 mil is still quite a bit of ways from what we need for the Timikin Shadow, which is currently worth about 1.8 bill. And I'll definitely have to purchase a few permanent upgrades such as Rigor and Augury. And then I also may want to get an Avernic for myself. They are quite expensive at the moment, so I'm hoping those go down as well, but that is going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, let me know with a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in this series. But with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.
In the next episode, we'll be taking on one of the most consistent moneymakers in the game, Zora.